Hi, I'm Christy from Adventures in ISTEM, and I've been using Edpuzzle for over five years to host my videos for flipped lessons. Edpuzzle is super easy to use and it integrates easily with most LMS and gives the students feedback as they watch it so they're aware of how they're doing and how they're learning the information. If you're looking for a way to have students watch a video, making sure they can't skip and have questions along the way, it's easy to use and provides you with analytics, then you'll want to learn about Edpuzzle. I'm going to take you through everything you need to know from how to sign up, to uploading videos, editing videos, sharing with students, and gathering the analytics. Let's get started. To get started on Edpuzzle, you will want to type in edpuzzle.com into the address bar. That will take you to this site. From here, you go to sign up. You're going to choose I'm a teacher. And you can either sign in with Google if you have a Google account. I highly recommend it this way, um, especially if you are going to be incorporating uh, your Google Classroom students or you can just hit sign up with Edpuzzle. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit sign in with my Google account. And then you're just gonna type in your information and you're gonna put in a password if you wanna have a password protecting it. Um, and then you just hit I agree and you create your new account. Now from here, you're gonna put in your school name. I'm just gonna go ahead and put in um, my college just for the demonstration purposes and see what comes up. Oh, my college doesn't come up. Okay, so I'm just gonna choose Chapman University here. And then you put in your subject area. I'm just gonna choose general education again for the demonstration purposes. And then you'll hit join school. Okay, so here's the home page, which shows up when you first log in. And then over on the side, we have content, curriculum, your um, school and videos that other teachers have posted, your content, and then popular channels where you can grab videos from. So let's go ahead and let's head to my content. And this is where you're gonna be uploading your videos you've created. To upload a video, first you're gonna hit add content. And here you can actually create your own video, um, but I highly recommend already having it ready to go. So upload a video. You're gonna choose your file or you can drag your videos over. So I'm gonna come on over here and I'm gonna pull up um, one of the videos that I've created and it's ready to go. It's my next flip lesson. And so now it's going to upload the file for you. And this can take a few minutes. So when I'm having this happen, this is when I upload it and then I just walk away for a while. You might want to just work on other things and come back maybe 15 minutes, 20 minutes, because it's going to take a while to upload it and then it's also going to process it before you can do anything. Okay. So now the video has been uploaded and processed and it is time to come on in here and um, you can edit this you can copy assign and share it just as it is i like to come in here and do some editing so to edit your video and that means adding questions shortening it um, adding comments you'll hit the edit button and here you can cut it you can cut the beginning and the end so you can shorten the beginning and the shorten the end you can't cut in the middle at all but you can um, get rid of some beginnings and some ends here uh, you can do voiceovers where you, if you have something that you want to have the students really pay attention to, you can give them a voiceover prompt on that. And then you can also add questions. Now the type of questions they're talking about is you can add multiple choice questions, open-ended questions, and that's where they're not gonna know the answer right away because you'll have to go back and grade it. This is if you want to at the end maybe have them write a summary of what they learned, and then you can go and check their summaries later. Um, and then uh, a note. 
So a note is just like a comment you want to leave the students, okay? So for example, when I first do my videos, I like to have my students take notes. So what I'm gonna do is in the very beginning, I'm gonna hit the word note, and here I'm gonna tell my students how to set up their notes. So set up your notes. I'm gonna give them the topic. And I like to give them a question that is gonna be guiding them. So I call it the essential question, the EQ. You might call it the big idea question, or you just might say question, or you might not have that. I, th I think having a question though to help guide them is um, important in helping them um, prepare for what they're expecting to be learning from this. So what is Newton's third law? So look up here, you have sub superscript, you have subscript, you can add links. So if you wanted them to read an article as they're watching the movie and then you know compare the two, you can do that. You can have pictures. Um, if you want them to look at the picture while doing the video, uh, so you have two types of text, they can do that. And you have the function key. You can also do a voiceover, and this is great for those that you need to um, have maybe a language barrier or you would just like to read this so you can add um, a voiceover where you are reading this information to them and that just adds for extra accessibility for students so then you'll go ahead and hit save and then you'll hit continue so now I like to put um notes or questions about every 30 seconds just to help them um, 30 seconds to about a minute and this helps them um, stay organized but also shortens it up so that they're not getting all this information at once so you might want to put in here uh, let's see here like this right here would be a great time to stop because um, it's talking about Newton's laws here third law what it is it gives a little example and it gives the definition here okay so this right here would be a good time to stop so i'm gonna watch that video and find out when is the best now i will tell you sometimes you're gonna get some weird faces but hey it's all part of it and the students will just laugh with it so it's all good so that's a good spot so here i would put in for me i would put in a note um, you might put in a question also and i'll show you how to do that so we go ahead and put a note in right there and I don't tell them what to write. I wouldn't say, please write the following. I would give them a prompt. And these prompts are going to be low level question type prompts like explain Newton's third law. Or instead of explain, you might put um, define or describe Newton's third law. Define Newton's third law. Okay, and then right here, you hit save. Now, if you wanna add a question with it, this is right here, it says add another note or question here. So you click on here and it might be something like, in Newton's third law, the forces are blank and blank. Okay, now I'm looking for two words. And again, these are the two words. Now, right here, you would think that they would be able to get it right away. You never know. But this is just a way to stop to say, okay, are you paying attention to what's actually going on? So equal, comma, opposite. And the check means that that's the correct answer. Equal, comma, same. Maybe different, comma, opposite you know just give them a couple choices and then hit save so now you have notes and questions so you would continue doing that until your video is complete and you have it all done and you're at the very end so now you're at the end of the video and there's a few things you can do you can give them a note if you want them to perhaps uh, if you want to send them a link to maybe a google quiz you could put that link there, you just add it, um, and you can set it there. If you want them to read an article, you could do that. Um, and just say, you know, 
click the link to take the quiz. That's what I usually have them do after they watch the video. I usually have them take a five to 10 question, multiple choice, true, false quiz, just very easy questions. I just wanna see if they really understood the video. Um, so you can do that if you want to and just hit save on that one. Or you could add an open-ended question um, telling them you want them to maybe summarize it. Summarize the video in three to five sentences. And that way they have something to do. Or you could give them, again, a few multiple choice questions at the very end right there instead of having them go to a Google form or take a quiz somewhere else. Um, then they can just answer about 10 questions there. Um, I wouldn't put more than three. It kind of gets overwhelming when there's so many because they're going to be loading up here, you know. It'll be like one question or another. Um, so you might want to do a Google form for that or set them to a place where you take your quizzes. Maybe have them play a quizzes game on this or a Kahoot game. Um, but that's what you can do at the very end. And then after you're done with that, you're going to hit finish. So from here, now it's time to assign it. But in order to assign it, um, if you're going to be using Google Classroom, you need to get some classes. So as you come here to my classes, you click on that. And you have a few things, uh, add a new class. You can go to Google Classroom and click on that and that's going to import it. Let me show you what that looks like. So over here, now you're going to add classes. So I already have these ones ready to go, but you can add a new class if you want to. You go to Google Classroom if you are using that. Um, you will click on that. You'll click on the class that you want to add. So I'm adding the one that's practice and then I'm going to hit import class. Now what happens is the students who are in your Google Classroom class are now already imported. So when they come to Edpuzzle, all they have to do is log in as a student, um, choose login with Google, and they're automatically um, put into your Edpuzzle class, which is great. If you are not using Google Classroom, there is another way, so let me show you that. So if you're not using Google Classroom, then you'll wanna click on add a new class, you can give it your class a name and a description. Uh, you can have the classic type, that's the one I would uh, suggest doing. Uh, hit create class. Here is your class. And now to get students to join your class, you're gonna click on invite students. Here you have to consent um, based on your laws and your district. Um, whether or not you have to have your parents' permission or not. So I'm just going to put no, just for practice reasons. Uh, you'll want to look into that. And then what you're going to do, it's very easy. You can send them this link through their mail. Uh, you can just um, post this code for them if you want to. So you can say, okay, when you come in, uh, put this code in. Uh, and it's just that way they can join your class. Okay, so that's another way of doing it. So now you've had students in your classroom and you need to now share that video. So you wanna head back over to your content, go into your content, and you're gonna pull up your video that you just created. And here is where you're going to assign the video. So you're gonna click on the word assign and you're choosing where you're going to assign it to. So you can choose all your class periods or one of them. You can assign it to all, or you can assign it to particular students only, which is kind of nice. So if you have a special video you want just for a few students to have and not others, um, if they need extra practice, whatever, that's a great um, strategy. You can put in a due date if you want to, and you just hit save. And here is where you want to keep stuff. It is automatically defaulted to prevent skipping. That means students cannot fast forward through the video and pretend that they watched the whole thing. It makes them actually watch the full video. Now, the great news is that after they have watched the video once, then they can go back and forth and rewatch it and manipulate any way they want to. But it does, um, make sure they actually watch the video. Okay. So now that you're set, you're gonna hit assign. And now the video is there for them. Now, if you saw that in the back, I wanna take you back through there. Come back here, um, back up a step. 
On the assign, one other way you can do it is through public links, and you can, you know, share this through, uh, copy it and give it to your colleagues who want to watch it. You can also embed it into your um, website if you have a website and that's how your students are participating and following you. Then you can do that too. Okay, so that's different things, different ways you can assign it. Okay, so now there is one other step. If you are using Google Classroom, Google Classroom is great because um, it has a place that says here, post on Google Classroom. So if you click on that, it's now gonna actually post that assignment on Google Classroom for the students. So it will give them that link and the assignment. So when you hit assign, it goes right there and it's gonna to go to your Google Classroom. Otherwise, you'll just have to tell the students they have to go into Edpuzzle and watch their video. So let me take you through now to the student's point of view. If you're using Edpuzzle with Google Classroom, when you share it, share the video with the students, um, you just click on that Google Classroom link and again, this is what the students are gonna see. They're gonna see this in their stream and they will click on the assignment and then here is the video. So they're gonna go right to it and it's already there set up for them, okay? Now, if however, you are not using Google Classroom, then the students will need to then go to Edpuzzle On Edpuzzle, they don't need to sign up. Remember, they're already part of the class, so all they need to do is hit log in, choose I'm a student, hit sign in with Google, and then here they are. And this will have their assignment for them. So they'll click on it and it'll tell them what to do. Notice it starts them right there, set up your notes, top is Google Third Law, hit continue, and they go through the video. So that's how the students are gonna access this video now from their end. Finally, I wanna to talk to you about analytics. What Edpuzzle is gonna show for you? So here's the analytics that the students get on their perspective. They can go down and they can scroll to see which questions they got correct, which ones they missed, and when they miss a question, it will highlight what the answer should have been um, so they can leave you a comment if they want to. Um, and once this is graded, then it will show their grade. So that's what students get. They get to see exactly what they got right, what they missed, and that way it helps them learn from their mistakes and to track their own progress. So here it is from the teacher's perspective. Um, when you come on to click the video, you can see the students' names here. You can see who finished watching it and who hasn't. Um, you can see when they turned it in, they turned it on time or not. It'll tell you how many answers to grade. Um, you can come to the questions here and it's gonna tell you how many questions they got right, um, if they missed a lot of questions. So that will help you. If it seems like a whole bunch of students are missing questions, you might wanna check that. Um, so you can pen the grade. Uh, for pending grades, you just click on the question, you read it. And then you can um, give him an answer if you want to. So it says one answer to grade. Come over here, check. Yes, it's great. Perfect. And now you've got all these things that you can see here. Um, what they got right, what they got wrong. Heading back to students here. If you click on a student's name, it's going to tell you the number of times they watched a section. So here it tells me they watched this section twice, um, these ones they watched one time, and their percent on it. So that's kind of nice to know if you want to know how long they're watching it. I'm going to also tell you how long it, they spent on it too, so you can see, okay, were they taking a long time, were they going slow. So these are some great analytics um, that it's going to give you. And once you do grade the question, then it does tell you the percent they got correct. One more thing I wanna show you before we go. If you go back to Edpuzzle here, um, and you want to head over to your icon here, where you would log out, um, come on down to the Help Center here, because the Help Center has a lot of special tools for you. Um, it has video lessons, getting started, how to assign videos, again, step-by-step, step, taking you through the process. 
um, your LMS integrations, what it integrates to, so how you can use Edpuzzle with Google Classroom, with Canvas, with Schoology, Moodle, Blackboard. So again, it takes you step by step, how you integrate it, how you assign it, how students can use through it, troubleshooting. It's got some great tools for you um, for helping you out, tips and tricks, everything that you need. So I would highly recommend coming over here again, going over it and it talks about getting the parental consent um, information for those that have districts that need this. Um, and so again, this is a great place you want to go. And again, that's the help center. So I hope you found this helpful and this is Ed Puzzle. If you would like some more information on how to use videos in the classroom, you can download my free ebook on the flipped classroom, how to flip your class in four easy steps. Just head to bit.ly slash free flipped ebook. Follow me on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook at Adventures in iSTEM for more teaching tips on how to integrate technology into your class. If you're a science teacher, then I have ready-to-go lessons that integrate technology into your science class, including flipped lessons that have videos, quizzes, and differentiated activities for the next day, digital science interactive notebooks, science stations following the blended learning station rotation model, and much more. Thank you for watching another Adventures in iSTEM and Beyond videos. For more ideas on how to incorporate science, technology, and skills for life into your classroom, go to adventuresinistem.com.